ArgoGemma is a code editor or debugger to help you write algorithms for compositions uh, like this. Um, it looks like this. Basically, you write your algorithm on the left hand side. This is a simple implementation of um, bubble sort. And then on the right hand side, uh, it gives you this timeline which shows the execution of the code. If you hold down shift, you can kind of uh, scrub through the execution, sort of step by step if you want. And uh, you can zoom this in and out and scroll around if you really want to follow some small part in detail. Uh, by default, uh, every every time we change the code, I'm just going to change this to 15, it will rerun the algorithm and we, we get a new timeline. So if we want to uh, inspect the value, value of any variables um, while we're debugging, we need to bring up a blank sheet with this button here. We use this sheet as a place to output any information we want about the algorithm. So for example, um, this variable i here, which is used as a list index as we're sorting, we can add that over here. Then we can uh, watch the value change as we scrub through the execution. Basically, this is like a normal watch variable in Eclipse or Visual Studio. Uh, okay, so let's add another variable, uh, x. That is the array that we're sorting. Okay, that basically doesn't work at all, right? Like, here we can kind of see it's sorting a little bit, but, um, you know, firstly, it's all going, printing off to the right here. So I'm going to right-click it and say I want to output it in a slightly different way. So, uh, yeah, we'll pick numbered list. So that's much better. Uh, we can kind of see the numbers as we scrub, the numbers bubbling. But, um, you know, it's still pretty difficult to follow these 10 digit real numbers. So I'm going to change this again. And this time I'm going to pick bar chart. So, yeah, now we have a nice visual representation of the values of the array. And it's easier for us to follow them as I scrub through the execution. So yeah, it starts and sorted and then kind of shifted to the right uh, one by one. Um, so, you know, then I change this to 150 and we can see, really get a good sense that bubble sorts and algorithm sorts from top to bottom, which is not immediately obvious just from looking at the code. The timeline will zoom out uh, automatically to show the whole execution, but you can still zoom all the way back in if you want to inspect something in detail, like you know maybe um, what happens when I gets near 150 or something like that. Um, I'm just going to put this back down to 15. Right. Uh, so what's interesting about ArgoGemma is I can uh, actually edit the code that produces uh, these outputs on the left on the fly. So I go right click, edit, brings up this white code editor and we can see the code it's using at the moment that just uh, prints representation, representation of i. But you know I can change this, let's add the, the value of uh, i is and then you can see on the sheet that now that's what it prints out and you know I can just change this code arbitrarily so you know if I want to do that right five times and then uh, there you can see there that it, yeah, it prints out five times so uh, let's just get rid of that okay so let's look at the code that produces X you see it starts with this comment draw that means it outputs to a canvas instead of as text but you can see fairly simple code here uh, to draw that bar chart but basically just um, iterates iterates through that value at x that I'm sorting and draws um, rectangles out. Notice I don't have to animate here or anything it just changes because when I scrub through the timeline the value of x changes and I can just edit this as well so change the colour uh, maybe uh, this width of the rectangle subtract so 1 here now we've got one pixel gap, so yeah, maybe yeah, that's clearer now. We can see a bit more uh, what's going on. Okay, to show how we might come up with um, something like that, you know, um, from scratch, let's just add um, 
I back in, and then uh, bring up. Uh, I'm going to bring up its, its code editor, um, and then uh, just delete this. So I'm going to have a drawing, and then I'm going to draw a circle. Uh, um, so you see that the picture is showing up there straight away. So I'll just edit this. So yeah, radius five, height five. And x, now I can refer to the value i, so I'll draw it at i times 10. Actually, I will I'm going to get, calculate that same bar width that I used for the bar graph as uh, 300 divided by the length of the array I'm sorting, um, and then draw it at i times y width. So then we can see that you know the value of i is sort of it goes through and it kind of carries it, a bar with it each time, and you can see that. I iterates much more than the, the you know the algorithm gets sorted because that's basically why it's a quadratic algorithm. The amount of times that I has to pass through there. Okay, let's delete all that. Um, so you might notice uh, on the timeline here we have this pattern here on the last two lines. Uh, if we look at the, the sixth line, we can see that it shows every pass we do um, through the array. Line six here saying done is true. Uh, then line 12 here, that's where we actually swap two adjacent items in the list. And if you look at the execution, you can see for each pass here, we sort of swap less and less items each time until um, the last pass, and then um, we don't swap any items there, and then that's when the algorithm terminates. <coughs> so we might be interested in looking into precisely how this number of swaps decreases as the algorithm runs like see whether this number decreases linearly each time. So I'm going to add another thing here, swaps. Oh yeah, it's not defined, yeah, no shit. Then just delete this code, we don't want that. And uh, in here I'm going to investigate this number of swaps. So um, to do that I'm going to use a special variable jam, which lets me interrogate information about the execution. So I'm using a method there visits which tells me every execution step which executes line 6 so you can see number execution step 23 I'll just I'll zoom in a bit here so yeah you can see down the bottom that's number 23 and then number step 108 that's on line 6 as well step 187 so that's my passes through the algorithm. You can see down here it shows you the, the step that you're on with the line. Um, and then uh, I'll add in a swap. So that's every time. Actually, I don't need the first time, so I'll just drop that. Then uh, visits to line 12, that's every time we actually make a swap. I'll print that out as well. So we can see that we make a swap on the 33rd execution step, 39th, the 45th, the 51st. Um, so what I want to do is count how many of those swaps come between each of those passes there. So I can see, for example, you know, from 78 down, you know, that, that's the ones that come between 187 and 108 or whatever. Okay. Uh, so, um, just to save time, uh, here's one that I made earlier, so, you know, it's got that same code at the top, and then we basically just iterate through those passes and count the number of swaps for each one, and then print that out in that list, Y. And then we can see there on the left that in the first pass it makes 12 swaps, then 9, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then five, and then three, three, for example. Um, so let's just run that again, and we can see, yeah, that time ten swaps, seven, six, five, four, one. So, um, but you know that's not a great way to output that information. So I'm going to add another watch thing here to output it in a slightly different format. This time I'm going to pick a uh, line chart and um, get that code up. So that's the code there for, for drawing a line chart out. And then uh, let's just separate that off. And I'm going to 
paste my code in there for calculating that variable y above it. And then we can see there over on the left, there's a line chart going down, so maybe it's linear there, it sort of slopes down. And uh, get rid of that one. Don't need that anymore. And um, oh, actually, I think it's just a bug here. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So we can see that this line graph with the number of swaps, you know, it does seem to be coming down linearly. And we'll run that a few times. Yeah, sort of little dip and bump at the end there. Again, well, it all sort of slopes down and flattens off. Well, that sort of kind of goes the other way, that one. So, um, yeah, let's bump that up to 150 now. Now we're going to calculate that. Yeah, so now we see uh, as a sort of bend. Let's get rid of this one, sorry. It's not so useful. Kind of bends down the other way there. And then uh, should bump that, uh, should put it up to 1,000. So you now it's actually taking a while to, because bubble sort is so inefficient. Um, you know, there's 3 million, 5 million-ish steps of execution that time so I want to calculate we can see now really clear smooth curve so we've learned that in fact that number of sorts decay sort of I don't know what that is square root graph or something or logarithmically or something like that and you know even with five million execution steps we can still zoom in all the way here and see these um sort of makes a few swaps and then the rest of the time just is draining through uh, so that's basically uh, the end of the demo. Um, feel free to download it, have a quick play around and um, yeah, let me know what you think.